In this video, teammates clash here at Spa, and I have one of the best races of my life in Gran Turismo 7. Hello everyone, and welcome back to a Gran Turismo 7 video where we're doing Beat the Meta in the BMW M6 Sprint. So that was next up on the vote. First up, this really silly start. Honestly, I absolutely hate the way this game starts us at Spa 24 hours. I really wish they would change it. If you enjoyed this video, do give it a like. Do subscribe to the channel to stay in touch with all the latest content. We jumped to lap two because it took us a lap to catch up to the pack. And we got big fights up ahead with Matthew and G-Stars into Lake Home. Now, we're going to try and take advantage of this by getting on the inside as we go through this right-handed. Leave me space. Beautiful bit of racing. Then let's jump to Chase Cam here as we go side by side into this right-handed. Then slowing the car down. That McLaren, by the way, this is earlier in the week before the pack. So that McLaren was the meta at the time as we go in to the left hand. Look at this beautiful racing here with G-Stars as we continue on out of there. Still side by side. We are losing a lot of time, to be fair, but I enjoy good racing. G-Stars does back out of it then as we jump to lap number four then. P15 still. The, this race this week is very good, in my opinion, unless it rains, I must admit. And we'll talk about that later in the video then as we come into this breaking zone. So I unfortunately went off at Blanchim on there. That unfortunately gives me a 0.5 second penalty. A little bit frustrating because you do get dirt on your tyres. I feel as you lose more time by doing that. But hey, there we go. As we continue on up here then, through we go. And onto the Kemmel straight then. G-Stars coming up behind me very quickly indeed. This is one where I would not fight it. I've got a penalty. I go to sit gear earlier just so that they can go by here. And then I'm going to fall in behind. So status quo for now. We jump up ahead though. Matthew and Ono fighting here as we go in to Puan then. Slight tap between the two. Another slight tap there. Unfortunately, Ono's going to touch that rear wheel onto the sippy stuff. And contact is made between Matthew and Ono. And Matthew's going to do a good thing here and wait up. Good sportsmanship there from Matthew as we jump later on in the lap then. And we're going to come in the pits there. We can see it started raining on the map. Although it looks very light to me as we come in the pits. But I was hoping to do some form of strategy here. And it's the first time we're going to see what this BMW is like in the rain. Then as we continue on out of the pits. That blue bar on the bottom left hand side. Not really above that first marker there. The third marker which... Or one third marker should I say. Which does signal that it's still dry tyres at the moment. But hopefully it does pick up as we get to the end of the lap then. People still haven't pit. They've got an additional lap here. With Wet Max there, the first of the pits. Stefanzi has gone back in the pits, weirdly. So accidentally put on the wrong tyre. Uh, yes, Mr. Stefanzi. Anyway, we go a lap further on then. And look at this. We are miles behind. So we made the wrong decision there for the intermediate tyres. This is all just getting used to the wet weather, of course, here at Spa. And I am trying to get used to some wet lines as well. As you know, so I'm going over towards the right-hand side here. Uh, I'm starting to try and understand where I can break, where I cannot break here. So, again, staying off the racing line here. Then I go back on it for reasons I don't know why as we come back on. But I'm just trying stuff here. This is the whole point. I'm trying stuff and I'm going in the pits here to try the wet, wet weather tyre out as well. Just to see what that's like in terms of intermediates versus wets. Because I was struggling in this race, to be fair. I was taking on some of the comments. I do read your comments, by the way, as they come in. I just don't answer them straight away. And you can see the spray there from the M6. So I don't answer them straight away. I do read them. Um, so obviously the wet weather video earlier on on Tuesday, I did read some comments. So I started taking wet weather lines because I know Womble's done a video on that. You can check out Womble on YouTube. And there definitely is a wet weather line. And I de definitely did start to see that you could break offline and you could have much better braking. Uh, the one thing I was struggling with personally, and as you see, I'm going over towards the right side again to get off that racing line. Uh, one thing I did struggle is on exit. On exit in this car. So as you come into here, obviously some people are taking the wider line and getting the acceleration out. Probably should have done that, to be honest with you. But even so, I'm trying things out at this moment in time. Again, getting over to that wet weather very quickly. Or wet part of the circuit, should I say, very quickly. As uh, so we head up a Rouge and Radion. Then. Very difficult corner to actually take a wet line. But I'm trying to just take it straight as I can here. As we continue on up there. And Matthew's disappeared off my rear view. Or, well, a teeny tiny speck, should I say. As we continue on here. Lap 19 then. Again, I'm just trying different things here. As I go into these corners, I do try different things throughout the week. So if any of you have seen my tweet, uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later on as we go into this right-hander. Again, I'm just trying to get off the, well, the dry line there, essentially, over towards the right-hand side. This car, I found, just struggles massively in the wet. It really, really, really does. The second you put any form of power down, it just spins its wheels. Offline, online, it doesn't really matter. It just likes to spin its wheels. So I was looking for a way to sort of stop that happening as I go into launch him on them and continue on out of there and hopefully stay over towards the right side stage stay over towards the right side in fact it's coming to the end of the race we're going to finish the race in this one we don't do that very often so we'll jump to 
the next race turn. And you can see I'm starting P8 there with a 16.4. Race number three is when... I think the McLaren was still meta. I can't actually remember. Obviously, I've done these throughout the week. And there is a patch in there somewhere as we head up our Rouge and Radion. And if there's any Renaults in here, we know it's patch day. Let's put it that way. So, we're right behind Sammy Snake. I had done a good race with Koke in, I think it was. Uh, I think that was race two. Could be race four. I have no idea. The race is all mingled up this week as we get towards the end of the Camel Straight. Then lots of action going on up ahead. I go towards that right-hand side then. Looking to try and take advantage where I can. Sammy Snake as well. Catching up to the French driver up ahead as we go into Le Combe then. Through we go. Any gaps there? I'm looking down the inside there. Went for it, but I have to pull out of that slight tap there. Apologies to Sammy Snake. Uh, somebody's binned it behind there, actually, as we go in towards this right-hander. Still side-by-side -side action going on up ahead. Everything seems to just down. In fact, I do see a Renault up ahead, so I think this is after patch day then. So, yes, this is when the McLaren's a bit, left, uh, bit less powerful, and the Renault has become more powerful. It really has. I think they've uh, buffed that a little bit too much in terms of high speed, but we'll see how we go as we go to other high-speed circuits. There's not that many of them, to be fair. If you watch the car profiles, you will notice. As we go into this left-hander, we're right behind the McLaren here. Oh, F1 Slayers out towards... On the right side of the circuit here as we go on the inside of Sammy Snake then heading in towards this right hander slowing the car down then are we going to get this moved on side by side action I do love side by side action it is good fun when you get somebody you can race with here as we continue on out of there we are finally up into P7 and we haven't lost a pack overhead so that was a vital move to make a positive move and one we can hopefully capitalise on as we go towards the start of lap number two. Sammy Snake very close behind me here. And who's that? Calster. Hello, Calster. We've not seen you in a little while. Calster making a move on Sammy Snake then on the inside in that Audi R8. People are, are saying to me, by the way, with this wet weather, why aren't you using MR car? I mean, it's beat the meta. I have to try and beat it in the cars that are available. I don't think there's any MR cars left, but we'll have a look a little bit later on when we get to the tables. As we continue on up here, then Calster giving me a bump draft, which was nice of him. As we continue on. Now, we are quite quick in this Beamer, if I'm honest with you. The, the race pace of this Beamer is better than the time trial pace, in my opinion. However, mixed on an insane 15.3 in this car. So, I'll see what I can do. And we'll see what we can do later on in this video as well. F1 Slayers, unfortunately, just touches the outside of Puan then. Goes for a bit of a spin there in that AMG GT. And, uh, well, we go up another place. Lap number five then. We catch up to the Spanish driver in the NSX here and we've got a really good run on that driver as well on Cayman then as we look towards the outside we actually dropped Calster a little bit here as well so we're trying some pace at least we really should be in the 16s at this moment but we're still in the 17s it does depend on the circuit temps and everything in between but we do get past the NSX and they give that up so we're up into P5 we can actually see some big podium positions up ahead now we get towards the end of the lap then and you notice that wet weather radar there it has rain on it but I thought do you know what after the previous one where I didn't need dry straight away, I'm going to risk it. However, I didn't really notice the colour. And if you do look down there, as we do, it's a bit darker of a blue. So guess what happens here? We're going to get towards the end of the Kemmel straight then. We're going to hit the brakes and the brakes are not going to work. So yeah, we're going to go completely off here. And uh, yeah, we're just going to park it up at this moment in time because we definitely made the wrong decision there. And I'm actually going to do something very funny. And just type whoops. So, yeah, that's an unfortunate enter race. It's also why you haven't got any replay cameras when we were side by side. So, apologies for that, but whoops. We'll quit the race. We'll go into the next one then. We're P5 now, 16-1. So, we're bringing it down. Race number four then for this one. And here we go. We've got a full team of OP up ahead. The Italian team here as we head up Arouge and Radion then. If you enjoyed this video, as always, do get a like, do subscribe to the channel, stay in touch with all the latest content then as we are catching this NSX very quickly indeed. We're going to go towards the left-hand side of them on the Kemmel straight, but they get all the teammates slipstream here. So we're looking to see where we can go then. Where are they going to go first of all? I'm thinking right and then go left here. We're going to send it down the outside then. Can we make this work? That is the question. Round the outside we go. Up ahead then. Here we go. We've got some race action. Slide tap between the OP team. Oh, big contact then through the right-hander we go. We gain two more positions then. We're absolutely annihilating this team right now. And we're up into P2. Not too shabby at all here as we go into this right hand. We've got two by two behind me. Look at that rear view mirror. My word, it is packed full of cars then as we go into this left hander. And what we're going to do actually is advance a bit further on in the lap then because we're not doing too bad here. So up into P2. Max Power very close behind us in, I think, what, I can't even tell what livery that is. I get a small screen than you when I commentate over this. I think it's Red Bull, but don't quote me on that as we continue on out of there then. Max Power, going to give me a bit of a bump draft there. I appreciate that. You can see my brake balance at this moment in time. It changes each and every race, depending on how I feel like. But I'll try and plus three at the time as I go up here. Oh, Max Power nearly loses it on a Rouge and Rally on then. 
big old oversteer moment. Now, here we go. The rain has come here, in here then. And I wasn't sure what to do here. I did notice it was not over the full circuit at this moment in time. But do I pit or do I not pit? So, Ali will pair. Whatever Ali does, I'm doing the opposite. They carry on. But... Learning from my mistake last time. I can see the darker blue. I'm going to come in the pits then, and I'm going to look to change tyres. Is this a good call? Is this a bad call? Let's find out. But one thing I'm also going to do is when it's wet weather, obviously you don't use as much fuel. So I was like, okay. Do you know what? I was thinking about it. Should I? Should I not refuel? Should I? Should I not? What do you think I'm going to do, folks? You can see the, the thinking, the thinking finger there rubbing the chin. What's going to happen? Are we going to click it? We are. We are. The smile comes on. So obviously, I'm going to have to save a bit of fuel. Now, because I've been struggling in the wet weather, I was thinking of different ways I could save fuel. And one of them is to obviously short shift a bit more or potentially use fuel map. So we're going to try a couple of things here and see if that improves it. Obviously, we're going to come out ahead and lead in the pack, basically, because we're on the right tyre here. Or we should be, at least. You can see that left bar, the rain bar, is well above that third icon down below the webcam there as we go into the right-hander. And looking to slow it down here as we continue on through. So we jump up ahead to Alu then. Or Alumni here. And you can see they are really, really, really struggling in this wet weather. And we're going to jump ahead then. Lap number six here. And they're going to eventually come in the pits. We've got somebody up ahead struggling here. That's Chappers. Chappers having a bit of a mare there. On the wrong tyre, of course. Uh, very difficult to pit the tyre, I would say. Depending on the wet weather. So we're going to continue on up here, Rouge and Radion then, lap number seven. You can see here we are in the lead, which is always good. Good start here in the Beat the Meta race then. And we're going to head over towards that right-hand side. Again, we're going to head towards Puan then. You can see here the NSX behind me goes towards that racing line. You know, people tell me not to use the racing line. They're using the racing line absolutely fine. So I'm trying to take different lines here where appropriate. And here I'm trying to stay on the outside then. Uh, there's more grip there. And then we get back on the racing line. Then I'm going to stick towards this right-hand side. Then as we come into the braking zone, I'm going to cross the racing line here. Get over towards a bit more grippy part of the circuit. And this is what I'm trying to do. And notice there, as I come on the racing line there, the turbo kicks in. Spins the wheels there. Can't really do much about that. But the NSX goes clean on by then as we go in towards this right-hand. Again, they're using the racing line. I, I'm very confused by this. You know, most people tell me to use the wet line. I think you should use the wet line as well. But look at them. They're just using it absolutely fine. So I get very confused by this. As we continue on out of here, I'm trying to get some grip here. Get over towards that right side. Here we go. We can accelerate a little bit more. So next up then, the NSX has already darted 1.2 seconds ahead of me here. Then as we go into Eau Rouge and Radion. Then. In terms of tyres, so we're on the intermediates. We probably should be on the wets at this moment in time. Max power behind me on the wets. The NSX bed on the intermediates. Uh, mostly everybody is on the intermediates actually. It's only very few people that are actually on the wet tyres. Max power is one of those. Tip of my tee here as we see that Lamborghini go on by here. I'm going to send it on max power into the braking zone as they then go a little bit too deep then. And you notice in here then, I'm trying to stay on the outside of corners, which is normally where the grip is in the wet. Uh, as we go into here, we are going to touch that dry line. I can't really go towards the outside with the Lamborghini there. Again, head over towards the right side a little bit here. We're following the same line as everybody else because I know there's been a lot of questions as to why I tweeted what I tweeted as we go into here. I can't go to the outside as there's another car there. So oh, I'm just trying to be careful here on the exit, of course. Uh, way, way too much oversteer. You see here, I am struggling with traction. Why aren't you using traction control, Titch? It's probably going to be a question that is going to be asked in the comments a lot. Let me answer that question for you. Traction control actually kills this car even more in the wets. Well, at least TC1 does as we go into left-hander. Every time I use traction control in this one, the second I get any form of weird slip, it would just spin you out as the turbo just goes like peak crazy so i think there's an issue there with the turbo as we go to lap number five then lap number 12 sorry position five lap number 12 i will get my words out here and we are now got big don jt marathonic behind us here a little bit of a wiggle up oh rouge and rally on then and i'm pretty sure that's gonna be a penalty for track limit surely that there we go and you notice i'm using fuel map two now so i actually found that to be the best way to control the uh the power oversteer essentially in this car in the wet track control was just Honestly, it was dire. You just spin out. It was really weird, actually, the way it worked. Um, I was very confused by it. So I was trying to keep a nice tight line here just so I could stay on a bit more of the grippy stuff. But no matter what I tried, as I say, I tried all sorts in the various races. Obviously, we're on lap 12, so you've not seen what I've done on, like, five of the laps. Um, but I was trying all sorts here. Outside line, inside line, off line, on the line in some situations. And no matter what I tried here, it was just fundamentally an issue. Now, I was actually checking... Tire temperatures in this one, okay. And one thing I did notice 
did, did notice is that the rear tyres were well above 50, which is where I expect them to be. Obviously, the wheel spin, they're helping in situations. But the front tyres were around 40, around 40. And no matter what I did, I could not get them any further. So obviously, I'm going to lose a bit of time here on accelerating there because I'm well, going to get the penalty as well. But I'm in a higher gear at the moment in time. As you see, another one goes past me. That's Alu. Remember, Alu was on the wrong tyre for a while. Now on the right tyre as we head into here. So you notice I was getting closer to that racing line. Just trying something different. Again, trying something different. Trying to stay as close to the racing line as possible while, while being slightly off it. That was my goal here with this one uh, on this particular lap, just to try stuff. A little bit of a wiggle there, which is expected as one bull goes around me in that FT1. Again, I've got to be careful of understeering there, which is why I try and back out of that as best as I can. And again, you know, Womble there using more of the racing line as we continue on through here. So I'm actually not sure what to do, to be honest with you. I was staying well off the racing line. It wasn't working. Every time I used it, it's a bit slippy. Yeah, I don't know. A mixture of all sorts of problems then. So we're going to come in up here. We're going to try the wet tyre out just out of curiosity. See what I can do on the wet weather tyre. It is wet weather weather, to be honest with you. As we then, you can see there, of course, up on fuel as well with some of the fuel saving stuff. And when I come out the pits, the tyre temperatures are well above 50 which actually makes it quite grippy, to be honest with you, and feeling a little bit better. So we're going to continue on out of here then and advance the run. We are going to get intermediate weather soon. But again, when you get intermediate weather, when you're on the wet weather tyre, your tyre temp should shoot up. It really should, because obviously it's drier, the rubber starts to warm up. So if you play any of a racing game, the, it heats up really quickly and it becomes very, I don't even know what the word is, very odd to drive, essentially. So that's what I was expecting to happen, to be honest. But guess what happened? No, so wet weather tyre, but colder. It carried on getting colder, and I ended up in the same position I was on the intermediates. And in fact, I couldn't even catch up to people on intermediates in wet weather there. So I quit the wet weather in this car, and I put that tweet out because I was just fed up with it at that point, to be honest with you. I did jump into a race after that and got punted off by an OP team member. So they're a bit rough, should I say, the uh, OP team. So I'm going to take more of a wide berth with them. Then I jumped into this race, which was a 1 a.m. race, believe it or not. 1 a.m. I went into this race. I just fancied to... Well, if it was dry, it was going to do the race. And if it was wet, I was going to quit it. And that's what I've been doing ever since. So let's see what we can do here. We start P3 then. We do have A plus in here. And beat the meta, by the way. I haven't even talked about this. Beat the meta in terms of what is it. Do check out the description. I do talk about it. The IDR8 try and send it around the outside. The Renault was having none of it then as they go up the inside. And we've now got a bit of an advantage on Jessen as we go into this right-hander. Up into P2 then. Here we go with a race. This is a race that I really think you guys are going to enjoy. And I will say that with a fact. So make sure you sat back. You've got a drink for this one. This is a fun one then. As we continue on through here, there, the Audi very close to my rear bumper. That Renault just edging out that gap a teeny tiny bit here. We get to lap number two. That Audi's catching me very quickly. I really didn't want them to go for the overtake here. And they didn't go for the overtake. They go, gave me a bump draft there. I really do appreciate it. 20 a.m. So I kind of forgot to put my thumbs up there. And look at that for a lap time. 16.5. Not too bad on a first stint, that is for sure. And we are back with this Renault then. Lap number six. Here we go. Can we get to P1? Can we do beat them out of here versus the Renault now? Not the McLaren. Or basically any, any MR car, I suppose, isn't it, in this situation? Let's see what happens then. We are in the slipstream here of the Renault RC01 here of Fran Felipe as we go up Arouge and Radion. Then here we go. Now, I, don't, I haven't shown you the wet weather yet. There is some wet weather in this race, believe it or not. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit later on because people are going to get very confused very quickly. We go towards the outside line. Now, this replay didn't save, unfortunately. I had the storage issue because I've saved too many. Um, so, unfortunately, I haven't saved it. And obviously, I've started my storage problem again, which is very annoying. But Fran Felipe, what a defense that is. Just slows it down the apex nicely there. Really good defense then. And it's going to keep P1 here on lap number six. So let's actually advance further on. Same situation. One lap later. Fran Felipe up ahead. What can we do this time? So we've got a good run. That Renault is really quick in a straight line. I feel like they've made it a bit too quick in a straight line, if I'm honest with you. I had the run there, but we're evening out once again here. As we go into this breaking zone, and Fran Felipe looking for the defense again. Another beautiful defense here. So I'm going to try something different potentially. No, they get a good run out of that corner. Really well defended once again by the Spanish driver. Lap number nine then. Lap number eight. I think they managed to go for it. They managed to pull enough from a gap here. Lap number nine then. Once again, this is deja vu number three here. As we go up, Arouge and Radion. So they go towards the right hand side. I go towards the left. I got a bit more of a run earlier on this time. So the speed should be matched here rather than a bit of a slingshot pass. I really should start saving fuel, I think, in this one because that would have helped me massively. But you can see there, they've got the advantage. What I'm going to do now is try and send it round the outside. It's been defending that apex. It's something slightly different here as we go into the left hand here. Side by side racing once again. Look at this. In towards the right we go. Still going here. Slight tap. Nothing major there. They gave me just enough room. 
Well played to Fran Felipe. What a defense that is. Really, really, really well played. And I'm struggling to find a way past this Renault at the moment. I really am, but it's not over yet, is it? It's never over in this race. This is lap number nine. And again, we'll talk about this wet weather in just a second. So we advance then towards lap number 10. And in we go to La Sosa. And so, same situation once again. Jess had already gone in the pits, which I thought could be a potential advantage with the wet weather that was on the horizon here then in this race. As we head up Au Rouge and Radion here then. Somebody else goes in the pits there in P number six. Through we go. We've got the run. Can we do it this time? Can we do it this time? That is the question. We go towards that outside then. It's lovely livery on that car as well as we head towards Lake Home. We just can't get the run. Look at it. We can't go to sixth gear really here if we want the run. It is faster in fifth. Sixth gear, just a tiny bit slow. Nothing major, but I really should have done it to save some fuel, if I'm honest, as we go in to the right and left because then maybe we could jump into the pits. Who knows? As we go through Lake Home. Again, another wonderful defense here from the Spanish driver. If you're wondering how to defend into Lake Home on the Kemmel Strait, you're seeing it right here. Now, you can just see that weather wet weather on that radar down below you can see it's light blue as well which is why we were staying out here on the dry tire because we didn't know whether we'd need intermediates or not anyway we go towards that left hand side then of the Renault RS01 then can we do it this time in towards the brake zone well that's much later on the brakes than them then in we go still oh they defend it again what a defense you see my face change there because that was that was an impressive look at 1am so you gotta bear with me there that, that I was impressed with that defense that was beautiful as we go on to lap 13. Is it going to be lucky for some? That is the question. Or is it unlucky? I can't remember. As we continue on out of there then. Just taking the wider line here. We don't want to get too close to the Spanish driver. That wet, wet weather is coming in. It's getting closer then. And we, are, we do have to think about fuel at this moment in time. Because we do want to extend as much as possible into it. So we know whether we need intermediates or not. And here we go. We've got a good run on the Renault driver then. As we go towards that left-hand side. This is why we shift to sixth gear then. We're just trying to extend that stint a little bit longer if it's needed. As we head towards the braking zone then. That Renault defends again. Beautiful defense. Can I go around the outside then? Can I do it? Can I do it? Not quite still. We're in the same position once again. As we continue on through then. Lap 14. Here we go. Can we do it on lap 14? I have no idea what attempt number this is. I probably should have put one on the video to be honest with you. Here we go. Up there. Eau Rouge and Radion. Up the hill we go. As, let's see. We've got a good run here then in the slipstream. We've got a big old run here in fact. Look at this. Big old run. This is the chance, Sentage. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. Come on. Look at the wet weather. It's just coming in right now then. So we do have to be cautious a little bit here then. And the Renault just matches me on the straight then. In we go. Oh, here we go. It's side by side. Can we do it? No, they really extend it out the outside. So can we do a cutback then? This is a common move to do here at the exit of Lake Home. We've got a good run then. They go for that outside. That which I was surprised about, to be honest. I thought they'd go for the defense. But no, oh, bit of oversteer on the Renault then. We've got to run then through the right hand. There we go. We're going to come up to the left hander now. Oh, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. We catch it. Oh, we catch it just. Uh, I can't remember this. I did this a few days ago as we continue on then here. And we are once again in that rear exhaust of the Renault. That weather is in now. But we're noticing that it's not really getting moisture on the circuit then. There's no spray either. As we're going to head into the chicane. Are we going to come in the pits? Are we going to stay out for one lap later? That is the question. No, nope, we're coming in the pits at the same time. Then we both make the same decision that we do not need intermediate tyres then. As we come into the pits. And that's why I stayed in this race. I wouldn't normally stay in this race. Now you can see there we do need fuel. They actually saved more fuel than me then. As we continue on out here. Just avoiding that white line penalty. We do not want that. Jess then obviously pitted lap 8 in terms of the dry tyres. So they should really have caught us up here then. But we do not see them, really, in that rear view mirror. So they've had issues on the lap. I did sort of think here that this is my time here. The acceleration of the Renault is about the same. It's that top end that seems to be very good on it. So can we get the move done then here as we head towards Lake Home? We go then. Can we make the move stick? That is the question around the outside. Look at the glow on the Renault's wheels there. That is beautiful stuff then. But they do the same move again. I am struggling to find a way past this Renault. We're going to continue through here then as we continue on. They had a bit of a wiggle there then. We've got a really big run. Should miss gear there potentially. In towards the right hander we go. Still side by side. This was a phenomenal race. That's where you need that statement in the chat there. And you can see here, they still defend it around the outside. Beautiful stuff here. We get a really close run then as we continue on to here. Unfortunately, I do not notice the slight a bit of moisture that appears on the radar. I'm touching the slippy stuff. I go for a spin. Really, 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 really disappointed with that accent that I had there. I really felt I had some pace here. And I did actually catch a couple of seconds up on them at the end. I have no idea whether they were on intermediates or not. 
But what a phenomenal race that was. What a phenomenal race. That was an awesome race. I really did enjoy that one with Felipe. I really did. So a shout out to you, Felipe. That was absolutely awesome. Now, in terms of beat the meta, I did try a few more, but unfortunately, I'm just running out for beat the meta this week. It really did. Now, I had a really good race with Lightning in. Lightning, absolutely unbelievable, of course. We know Lightning. Medi was in there as well. That was good fun. Um, but yeah, if it rained, I'd quit the race, essentially. So I didn't actually manage to go for any more races here. Unfortunately, it's another second. We're not doing very well on beat the meta anymore, are we? That's two seconds in a row, I think, maybe. I can't remember. I can't remember what we did last week. But even so, here are the ones we do have first place with. That's the first of the top ten there. Let's go to the next part of the leaderboard, Titch. Come on. There we go. And you see more that we have got first place with. Now, in terms of the cars we do have second place with, we are going to be doing live streams with those beat the metas, okay? Because they've already had a video. I don't think they'd need another video, depending on the situation, of course, whether I can stream them or not. Um, if there is a good time to do them, and I've done all the group three, maybe there will be a video, but I'm pretty sure they're going to be live stream beat the metas. I know a few people have requested those as well as we jump to P21 to P30 then. In terms of the winners, the Crown F1 GTR up there. Look at that. That's insane. Uh, we've got Toyota Supers down at the bottom when they weren't meta cars. And Renault, of course, is a meta at the moment, but not a meta when I did that. That's in P27. You can check out all these videos in the description. There's a big playlist there. And there is our P2 in the BMW M6. We've got a lot of P2s now. What's that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them that we need to do. We've got P10 there for the Persia Gran Turismo car. And then the highest of the votes is the Silhouette. Now, that Silhouette... It's going to be very difficult to do beat the meta with. We are looking for a specific combo somewhere where we can actually take advantage of that. Probably a very short race somewhere would be beneficial, but we'll see what happens. Get to the votes though. Make sure you get your votes in the description. To get a vote in, or you, not in the description, in the comments. All you got to do in the comments is right. For example, Master returns to group three. I will give that a vote. If you say I vote for or anything like that, again, I cancel the vote and I will add them up. I am a bit behind on comments. I apologize. I will catch up with them soon. But, unfortunately, folks, that's going to be it for this video. If you did like it, do give a like. Do subscribe to the channel. Stay in touch with all the latest content. But that is going to be it for me. If you have enjoyed it, as I say, give it a like. There are two other videos there to check out, including Beat the Meta from last week and a car profile, where this will have a car profile this week. And then we can see if it's anywhere close to the endurance model, because people have asked for that. You can check out my links in the description, of course. A big thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in another video or live stream again very soon.